In a previous video, the 3D project box models were presented. The sketcher was used to figure out the flat layouts. This video will use FreeCAD's TechDraw workbench to create drawings and dimensions. This is another approach that will provide flat layout and bend center dimensions. Links in the description provide access to the models and more informative material. Let's jump right into the models. In a previous video we introduced both models, the top and the bottom, for the project box and we went through how to dimension them and yada yada yada, all the details. So we'll skip all of that. This video will focus on how to use the TechDraw workbench to generate a flat layout which also gives a nice shop drawing. So we'll do that. So here's our project box top, and we can rotate this a little bit. It's modeled in here nicely. So we've got that squared away. So the first thing we need to do is we need to unfold this. So we'll go into the sheet metal workbench, and we'll highlight this, I'm going to say bottom, which is actually the top of the box, and we'll go ahead and do an unfold. Again, your K-Factor and your ANSI need to be set up. This will have already been done if you use my model. So we'll go ahead here and hit OK. And that generates the flat layout and it adds two features in the model tree. One here, which is the actual dimensioned sheet metal. You'll see the thickness here. And the other one is a sketch. So what we'll want to do here is we'll want to turn off the metal and we'll want to turn off the model and leaving just the sketch. So we'll do a top view of that. Now let's make that fit in the screen here. Move that over. So there's your sketch and that's the flat layout and FreeCAD unfolded the sheet metal to give you a look at what the flat metal will look like before you bend the part. So what we can do is we've got this highlighted. Make sure you have this highlighted. We can go into the Tech Draw workbench. And the first thing we need to do is create a default page, which comes up there. And then we need to insert a view. So there it is. And this is a little bit big, so we can go into the page, expand that and go into the view, go down into the properties where it says scale here, and we can bring this down to 0.7. So that makes it a little bit smaller so it fits on the page. Go ahead and grab it. Let's grab it right here, and we'll slide that over so it fits in there nicely. So just for fun, why don't we go ahead and put an isometric view in this space over here. So we can do that by highlighting this last feature of the model, and just so you know where that's coming from, there's your isometric view. Oops, turned it off. So there's your isometric view right there. So we can go ahead here and hit this insert view, and then come back to the page, and there's our view right there. So that's a little bit big, so we'll come down here, and this is the second view marked. 001, and let's scale that down to 0.5. And there's our isometric view, so we can go ahead and grab a hold of that. Just left click, hold your left click down, and grab a hold of that, put that right in there. Okay, so we've got an isometric view of the part, and we've got our flat layout. Let's work on dimensions. So the first two dimensions that we'll want to put in here is going to be the width of this part and the height. So let's go ahead here and put in the width. So we'll click this point, and this is going to be control click. Oops, control click. So those two points are highlighted. Going to go for a horizontal dimension. There it is, right there. So we can put that in there, right there, put that wherever you want. 124.94 millimeters, and we'll click this point again and then control click this point. And this time it's gonna be a vertical dimension. So that's right there, 229.73. So just for fun, 
Let's take a look at what the spreadsheet says. And we're looking for a width of 220, I'm sorry, 124.94 and 229.73. So we go into the spreadsheet and here they are, 229.77 is pretty close and 124.97. Just for reference, 0 0.01 millimeters is just under four ten thousandths of an inch. So this little discrepancy of a few hundredths of a millimeter across a bend or two bends is insignificant. I don't know of any bend operation that will be accurate to anywhere near a thousandths or a half a thousand. So we can pretty much assume that these dimensions are in complete agreement. So let's fill this in. We need to know this bend center here for the side, so we'll click this point and we'll click this point here and that's going to be horizontal. So there's our dimension. We can pull that in right there. And then we'll need to know what the tab is. So we we'll want to pick up, there's, there's three points in here, so be careful. You want to pick up the one that's on the bend line and the one that's on the edge of the material. Vertical dimension, we got that in there. Let's highlight that, pull that down here so it's a little bit more visible. And then the last one here, find that point that's on the bend line and this point here that's on the edge of the material. Same thing, vertical dimension. And, all right, we didn't select something here, so let's go back here. Let's do that again. Here, and here, and pick up vertical dimension. There we go, we got it. Okay, so we've got the overall height or length of this part, we've got the width, we've got the end or long tab, we've got the short tab here, and we've got the side. This part's symmetric, so we don't have to dimension this. I mean, we could, it's going to be the same number, 11.26 millimeters, but it's the same dimension on either side. And if you want to, you can blow this up and you can expand this so you can dimension this little slot in here. It's such a minor feature of the part, probably not worth it, but I leave that to your discretion of how precise, how detailed you want to be. And that's going to influence the gap that's right in here when you bend the metal. And that's already been specified in the model, so if you want to go ahead and find the center of that and figure out, based on your notching process, where this all has to work out to be. If you follow these lines and you follow this model exactly, it's going to bend up pretty accurately to what has been shown in the model. But there's a little bit of wiggle room there, so just be aware that you can kind of play around with that a little bit. So on the, on the drawing, this is a nice drawing. You can go up here and you can print this drawing out if you want, which is a really nice feature. You can go in here and click on this green and it'll pull up an information window so you can fill in a title. We can say here, project box. We can fill that in. Let's make sure that it's not coming in here for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on with that. There we go. Okay, so we needed to fill in both the, the title and the subtitle in order for these things to appear. Little quirks in the program, little details that you got to play around with to get things to come out how you like them. But okay, so that's pretty much the whole ball of wax here. That's how we use TechDraw and how we specify the flat layout. So hopefully it's been helpful and you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.